Hello everybody, I am Bolt Matrix, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Legacy Evolution Axel Grease. This is a Junkion, don't you know? Our first female Decepticon Junkion is bathed in beautiful purple, dark blue, and gray, with a little bit of white on the top of her head. And I gotta admit, this figure in this color scheme is absolutely gorgeous. I love this head sculpt. It reminds me a little bit of RC, but that's fine. It's just, it's really good. I love the way that it looks. I love the slopeness of the head. You've got the texture of the white, the pink visor. It just works very, very well. And then that chest. The chest is just beautifully decorated. The molding is absolutely fantastic. And that Decepticon symbol in right there in the center, in the middle of whatever design this is, is really nice. Axle Grease is a retool of Scrap Hook. The main difference is being the head, the chest, and the accessories that the figures come with. Now, Axle Grease does come with the same, I guess you would call them exhausts, accessories that Scrap Hook came with, and Axle Grease also comes with the same hook. Honestly, I could have done without the hook, but I have a feeling that this hook has something to do with the giant dinosaur Junkion combiner that was revealed a little while ago. On Axel Grease's shins, she comes with engine block bits that can be wielded in each hand as guns, same as Scrap Hook. He has these bits on the on his shins, and then they can combine to form a single gun in robot mode, and then they turn around and they form this out-of-hood giant engine in vehicle mode. The other accessories she comes with are these bits. I think they're supposed to be blasters. They kind of look like blasters, but when she holds them, they they do look like guns, but at the same point, they both look kind of dumb, because they got these pegs coming off the bottom, or the fronts, I should say, where the blaster holes are. Still, they do work. For better or worse, Axel Grease has the exact same posability as Scrap Hook. The posability of this figure is good in the legs, but not so great in the arms. But I can't deny that every time I pose her, I it just looks good. It just looks so good, no matter what pose I put her in. Head does not have any up and down movement, but it does sw swivel side to side with no problem. Shoulders are on pegs that do disconnect from the shoulders, but they have 360 degree movement. They can fold in, but the giant pylons that are the shoulders do, well, they just get in the way. And there's no butterfly movement other than to unpeg the shoulder. There is a swivel up at the upper arm. However, I don't know what they're doing with the plastic on these elbows because every freaking time I go to move the elbow, I end up popping the elbow apart. Now, I had the same problem with Scrap Hook, but not to this degree. Then there is a double bend at the elbow. There's a bend at the elbow, and then there's a bend at the other elbow, and the fists do articulate, but on my copy, these fists are so damn tight, I'm afraid I'm actually going to snap them off. There is a torso swivel. The figure can kick forward and can kick back all the way. The legs can kick out 90 degrees. Then there is the swivel at the hip. Bend at the knee is 90 degrees. And then it's got multi-faceted ankles. <laughs> That's the only way to describe it. It's got the same transformation that Scrap Hook has. There's plenty of forward and back movement. And then there is an ankle rocker, though the ankle rocker is not as deep as some of the other figures in the line. Other than the shoulders, I really like this figure, except for the same problem that I have with all the damn weaponizers. Every time I start moving things around, the limbs fall off. And it's it's not with this figure specifically. Scrap Hook does it, Crosscut does it, the Dino weaponizers from Siege all do it. It's just a problem with the weaponizers. I am curious if we're going to get more Decepticon Junkion weaponizers. I have a feeling we are going to get a repaint of this guy. It just feels like it. And then we're also getting the giant dump truck dude that's coming later this year. I don't know if we're going to be getting any more, though. There are rumors that we could be getting more, but I don't know, don't have any evidence either way. Transformation for Axel Grease can be done without pulling the figure apart, but I actually like to just rip off the limbs because it does make things a little bit easier. So pull off the legs, pull off the arms, and then 
We're going to go ahead and get it transformed this way. Come to the shoulder section and unpeg them like that, and then fold them down flat. Take the hips, turn them around, and fold them back so they're pointing back like that. Come to the back and open up the back like that. Flip the head into the backpack and then flip that whole section down over the legs. And then you can just peg the upper thighs into the doors. So we got it looking like that. Now we could take the chest, fold that all the way down, and close those gray pieces in like that. So we've got the middle of the vehicle mode all ready to go. Now, come down to the feet and take the feet and collapse them up into the back of the legs or the lower legs like that. Combine them together. And there we have that and find our engine and have the guns pointing backwards. Plug that in and they've got the front of the vehicle mode. And we could come up to the front and peg that directly into place. We have half a car. It feels like an episode of Top Gear already. Now the arms, I hate transforming the arms. What I have to do you have to do is turn the fists upside down, turn the arms so that they're pointing inwards like that, and they'll fold in when well, you take the those sections and fold them in, and then those will peg in like that. And so they will peg in. Now we take the back and it makes it easier if you fold the shoulder bits out straight out the back like that. Take the arm and damn it. Take the arm and turn the, the upper arm so that the outside forearm is pointing towards the top of the wheel arch. And then take the fist and turn it to that way. And what we'll do is peg this sucker in like that. And then this will fold in ever so slightly. So you see how it's folded in like that? And then take the arm and bring it in and snap it into place like so. And we'll do the same thing with the other arm. Bring it in, turn the arm, turn the fist. And, oh God, that fist does not want to move. Bring the fist in and break the fist off because why not? Bend that in, bring that into place. Get these arms back into place and they will peg into the upper arms while I attempt to fix this fudging fudger stupid arm elbow Ugh, that's in but it doesn't look good I mean that I mean look at that that looks like the plastic is about to snap and that is really worrying oh well the blasters will combine like this and if I could just get them to freaking peg in, and then they'll go onto the back of the vehicle mode and peg into the arms, or the forearms. And that doesn't look right because the arms are out of whack. So I'm going to fix this off camera and then I'll come back to you. All right, there's Axel Grease's alt mode. And it is a, it's a heavy retool of Scraphook. And it works well. I like the look of it. It's definitely more of a Mad Max car than a Mad Max truck, which I'm perfectly happy with. And I love this color scheme. The light blue, the purple, the dark blue. Oh, and the gray or the gunmetal gray and the silver. Mm, it's such a beautiful color scheme for such a nasty, nasty Decepticon. I really like it. Now the hook, I haven't really figured out what to do yet. The, the directions say plug it into one of these. I prefer to plug it in back here. So it's looking like that. Or if you're feeling like a DeLorean, you just put it up top like that. Now, where's a lightning, a clock tower, and we gotta get this sucker up to 88 miles an hour. Now in alt mode, you can actually see the differences between the two figures. We've got a lot of differences, actually. The front of the vehicle modes are completely different. They just function the same. The tops of the vehicle modes are completely different and have completely different molding. And then the backs of the vehicle modes are different, but not as different as you might think. They're actually the same, especially if you remove all of the accessories. So let's get those off of axle grease. And then you can see the backs they're exactly the same. It's just the accessories that are different. And you know what? 
that's perfectly okay because we have this tiny little pickup truck here and then we have what I like to call the terror ute here. Okay, not really, but you know what I'm getting at. Overall, I do like axle grease. I think it's a good update to the scrap hook mold, but I really kind of wish she was her own true character and not a redo or a remold of another figure. And yes, I forgot to put the blasters back on. I think the alt mode looks great and it looks like a car that's straight out of Mad Max, which is definitely the aesthetic that I really do enjoy. Size-wise, let's see, we've got skids and then we've got Nightbird, and it scales between those two figures. So yeah. All right, folks, I'm going to continue picking up these weaponizers because I am stoked to get a hold of a giant Junkion weaponizer Tyrannosaurus. I'm looking forward to that. So folks, let me know what you think of this figure down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I have been Bolt Matrix, and I will catch you all next time.